So as I left things yesterday, the quilt had been rolled up. That was yesterday on Friday, the 3rd. Today's Saturday, the 4th. And I'm getting ready to long arm quilt this quilt. But that's for a different video. So you can just watch that in a totally different video. But I figured I'd show you what I was doing today. Because I'm trying to keep track of all the things that I'm doing. But the first thing I need to do for this quilt, before I even make a video for it, I need to choose a thread color. So I'm back here digging through thread. So I come down here, and it's a dark quilt, so it needs a dark thread. I'm thinking this one right here. This is color purple rose. So let's unhook the thingy. Oh, I'm doing this one-handed. Let's unhook the thread and lay it on the quilt. Oh, that's perfect. You can't even see it on that color. Let's see a different one, just in case. Um, well, no, no, red, red. No, definitely not. Um, yeah, the light colors are not gonna work. Let's lay a brown on there, just in case. Nope, that'll be too stark. I want something that blends with the background fabric. I don't have no darks in my doubles. Mm, nope. Nothing from there. This is my ice cord pile. There's a darker brown. Hmm. Maybe. I'm looking to see. Nope, that's not going to work. So we just put it back. And that's it, because that's my pantograph drawer and my glow threads down in here. So it looks like Purple Rose is going to be the color that I quilt with. Now I just need to decide on something to quilt, but by then I shall have a idea of what I want to quilt on it but for now I just need to baste it and get it ready and then I can think about what to quilt on it. Let's go see though what I have going on in the room. So after I filmed and edited uh, last night so that you guys could have the video today which is Saturday the 4th of 2023 I actually put together well I didn't put it together yet Still have to do that, but I chose a backing for another quilt to go on after. I have this quilt right here. So this is the quilt, and I made this in a video, but I found this backing fabric. The lighting is not on in here, so just one light, but that is it, and it has tiny, tiny little speckles on it. But it looks the same as these kind of fabrics, so that's why I chose it. But what I'm going to be doing is inserting... I'm going to be turning this into the tag, so I'll probably put it right here on this block. Um, embroider my tag on here. And then I'm going to cut this out and insert this into it. Maybe I'll uh, throw that in this video so you can see how I'm doing that with my extra blocks. But for now, this can just sit because I have to go film what's on the long arm and get that done because, you know... I'm trying to stay busy as best as I possibly can, so. <laughs> but I'll drag you with me throughout the week and all the things that I'm working on and doing, so I'm going to go do that on the long arm and get that out of the way, and hopefully I can get that all done in today. <laughs> it's a very large quilt. It's 94 by 106, so, and I just made it in a most recent video that came out Friday the 2nd? No. Friday the 3rd, because today's the 4th, Saturday. So Friday the 3rd, you might want to check out that video. I'll link it up here. But all right, I'm going to go get to filming the long arm so that way it can have its own video. <sighs> I'm trying to vlog all of this for everybody so that you can all see the things that I do every day. So it's Saturday, almost 9 p.m. It's done. I finished this one, but I filmed it for another video like I was saying, but I just figured I'd show you guys that I'm done with this one and I got to bind it and stuff like that, but I get to pull it off the frame now. So let's do that.
early Tuesday morning and I am still really tired. <laughs> but today I'm going to show you how to piece the back that like I've been doing. So I, I went ahead and embroidered my tag on here. Wow, it's not very showing up. Anyway, I embroidered a little tag on here so it's not like prominent, but we're going to insert it into this. I was going to show you guys how I do that just in case anybody wanted to know how I've been inserting the extra blocks into the solid fabrics. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. All right, so all I'm doing is first thing is everything's nice and pressed. Even the backing fabric is pressed. What I need to do with this one is I do need to uh, rectangle it up or square it up in those terms. And that way it uh, is even and equal because obviously not everything was exactly the same size when I made this original quilt and the leftover pieces weren't the exact size. So we need to start by trimming everything equal. So this seems to be pretty straight right here. We're just going to start right here and I'm going to go through and just lop off any excess. Keeping it nice and straight. Just like that. So I mean, it's going to have this a little bit. That side seems good. That side seems good. This side kind of has a little bit of bowing right here. So I'm just going to start with the straightest part, which is this corner. And I'm literally just going to do the same thing. Trying to keep that end equal. So now the center piece that's going to go inside the backing fabric is complete. And sorry if my video sounds kind of low in volume today. It's because I'm not working with a microphone right now because it's being charged. All right, so now we need the backing fabric. You need to make sure that your backing is fully pressed first because it needs to be equal with no wrinkles. Well, it has some wrinkles, but because obviously they don't always come out, but it needs to be aligned so that there's no bowing right here. So if it wasn't aligned, it would look like this and it would be off and you can see. So make sure that it's equal and you're putting it back together when you go to do that equally. And what we're gonna do, slide that out of the way for a second, was we're gonna find out how wide this is. So it is 13 and a half inches. Let's check the other side just to make sure. 13 and a half exactly. So this is a 13 and a half inch wide. So we're going to come over here. We're going to decide, obviously, I don't want anything here on this end. And I don't want anything here on this end, at least five inches, because I don't want it to land at the where I hook it to my red snappers on the long arm or pin it if you have to pin. I don't want it to land like that. So I'm going to go ahead, slide this over keeping it straight on a line and I'm going to come over here with a big ruler, nice big ruler, and I'm going to cut out 13 inches. So I'm actually going to go right here to about, mm -hmm, let's go down this way more. I don't want too much hanging. I'm going to go right there. Okay. So I'm going to come to the marks on here and we're going to count out. So I'm going to start with the first cut, slide it over, and from here we're going to count over 13 inches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, oops, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and a half. So I just counted over 13 inches, but I have half on my ruler, and I know that this needs to be a half. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. And obviously I was not prepared. So 
I need a ruler I can use my left hand with. All right, so I cut out my inches. Now I don't want to move this or this. I don't want these two getting out of place. So what I'm gonna do is bring it up here and leave it out of the way and then move this one up here and out of the way. We're gonna work on this middle piece. So I'm gonna go ahead now, I'm gonna open it and I'm gonna position my block. This is the center crease, even though I tried to iron that out, it didn't come out all the way. And this is the center right here. I want this to be center. So I'm gonna come in right here and I'm gonna line that center on the center. So I know that that's going to be in the center of the back. I'm gonna start with one side and then do the other. What we're gonna do is, this is how I do it. I literally take my ruler and I put it down. I line up the line here and I line up the line here. And then I'm gonna take this edge right here and line it up on the quarter inch line on my, I mean quarter inch, a half an inch line on my ruler. So half an inch sticking over onto the ruler. That's where I want it to be. This is where I will cut. Just like that, okay? This piece we need. So we're just gonna go ahead, slide it over like this. Same thing on this side. Line up the lines right here and right here. And we're gonna just pick this up and put it over the ruler until it's at the half an inch mark on the top and on the bottom. Fold that out of the way, cut that off. We need this end piece and this end piece. We don't need that middle piece. We're replacing it. So this just becomes scraps and I can get two 10 inch squares out of here for my scrap bin. And then all we're gonna do is sew this on here, right there, and then sew this on here, right there. And then we're gonna sew this whole unit to the other one. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that real quick. So it's sewn on here. So I'm just gonna press this away and press this away because towards it has got too many seams. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this and then we're just gonna put it in the middle. So, and it should line up. The salvages should meet and everything. So I'm gonna press it and give me a second. When it's pressed, this is what's gonna go. So this is the bottom because this is where my little tag is. It's like my signature. And this is the bottom piece. So we're literally gonna line it back up. So you can see right here, it's like we did nothing because right here, the words meet up back where they're supposed to. So all the piece, all these pieces are gonna land where they're supposed to in the same as the other. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right sides together. I'm gonna turn it this way so that I can pin this way. We're actually going to be pinning it. I'm gonna line this up and all I'm doing is matching everything back where it went. So I'm just gonna put a pin there. This flower matched up with that because that's the other side of that flower. Throw a pin in it. Then I'm just gonna straighten it out and I'm gonna match this side real quick. First, just like this, throw a pin in here and then match this little flower right there at the top of that flower. And then the only thing I need to do is put a pin right here in the center and maybe right here and right here. And then I'm just gonna sew a quarter inch seam along this and these two pieces. So if you had like a striped fabric or a zigzag fabric or something with a big print, it would line right back up again where it's supposed to sit because it's exactly the same size again. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this. Once it's sewn, I'm just going to press it away, but I want you to see, oops, that, well, these kind of fabrics don't line up like they're supposed to. 
<laughs> but the rest of that flower is supposed to be like the opposite direction. But either way, it's in there. The words meet up like they're supposed to. Anyway, so that one's in there. But if it would have been a stripe, the stripes would have been lined up because that's the way it goes. But this isn't a stripe. It's a flower. So I'm going to go ahead and press this back and then I'm just going to add the top to it. And that's how it's done. So here it's inserted into my backing fabric. So this right here is the bottom and then up here is the top for my quilt. So now it's ready for me to load on the long arm. So here's my top and then my back just like that. And it is ready to go to the long arm. So that's it. That's all that's, you know, in there. And this quilt isn't very big, so I'm just going to use a large chunk of scrap batting. Because sometimes when I load other quilts, I end up having, like, big chunks. So say, like, I, I buy 120-inch batting. So if I have, like, a quilt that's 70 inches and I used my 120 inch I have all that space that I can cut and use for quilts like this so it's fresh brand new batting I just make sure I get the most of it instead of you know franken piecing it together so that's ready for the long arm and let's go load it up and quilt it up so I figured while I was in here getting things ready to load the long arm real quick the quilt that I just showed you the backing to make. I also need to piece together or Franken piece together some batting. I'm not going to use a machine for this. We are going to go to the iron for this one. So let me show you what I'm doing. So here's a big piece. It's folded in half and this is how wide it is. It's just this wide, but in half, it's the width of my quilt top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this exactly in half right here. So I folded it and I have both these ends about the same. And all I need to do is chop this end off real quick. So I split it with some scissors. Now I have two separate pieces. And what I'm going to do is fold them just right so that I can have a straight line on one side to hook them together. But I'm also going to make sure that the batting is the correct direction. Direction, sorry. So this is the top. And if you look at the underside, you see the poke sticking out this way. That's the bottom. I need both my pieces to have both these on the same exact side, whether it's this side or that side when I go to hook them together I need them to be the same exact so let's cut this real quick okay so I folded them both they're both folded with the nice side out it doesn't matter which way but what I'm going to do is I'm going to you could see that they were not even so what I'm going to do is lay this one on top of this one right here stack them just like that and I'm going to cut them at the same exact time. So I'm really just going to take my large ruler here and come about right here where I know that I'm getting both the under one and the top one at the same exact time so that they're the same exact cut and that they fit together nicely. So let me cut that real quick. So I couldn't do that well filming <laughs> so this one is cut it got both layers and then this bottom one got cut and it got both layers just like this and now we're going to go to the ironing board and connect the two of these together so at the ironing board I'm just gonna carefully if it wiggles and squirms I'm sorry but that's the only place I have to put you at the moment we're going to take one of the pieces first and I'm going to open it up 
and I'm going to lay it with that pokey side facing down, just like this, and I'm going to smooth it out, okay, just like this. Then I'm going to take that other piece, and it's going to go up here, if I can get it to go, there we go, there we go, there we go, right there, I'm going to come down a little, just like that. And both of these, these are the sides that I cut next to each other. We're going to butt them up right next to each other, just like this. And you can see one is longer than the other, but that's okay because I'm franken piecing and my quilt actually goes this way for width. So I'm going to smooth this one out right next to the other one. Just like this this, like this. I don't want no gaps in between the two. So they're nice and smooth. No gap. Just like that. Now you can do this on the long arm while it's on the long arm, but I didn't want to. I wanted to do this this way. So I have this stuff, this heat and bond. I'm just going to hold the box up. I have heat and bond easy seam tape great for batting. I love this stuff. I swear by it when I franken piece, unless I'm piecing with a zigzag stitch on the other machine, but right now I don't feel like breaking that out. So I'm going to lay it out, unroll it, grab a pair of scissors, and I'm going to cut it almost to the end because it kind of wants to stretch just a little bit. So now I have no gaps. Everything's good. I'm going to lay my iron on top of it. Pick it up, lay it on top. Pick it up, lay it on top. And my other hand is smoothing it out as I go. Because like I said, it stretches just a little bit. Not much, just a little. Making sure that the whole entire thing is got no gaps along the way. And making sure that also you have it glue side down. You don't want it glue side up. It unrolls glue side down the tape. Now that it's on there, just going to go back the other way one more time. Picking it up, holding the iron down. Picking it up, holding it down. Just like this. All the way down. I don't do the opposite side, but right now, as you can see, they are hooked together. And it's nice because I can just move it around as I please and they don't fall apart. So there's that. And you can see I just pulled on it and it's staying together. Sorry for the wiggling. But now my batting is ready. Let's go load the long arm. I have all my parts and pieces. Now to put them on here. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> the one who's always, always, always at my feet, back and forth, right here. Thumper. <laughs> what am I going to do with you, kitty? So it's loaded. And just to let everyone know, I always float my tops. This is what floating is called. So I literally roll the backing fabric on, and that's always a little taut. It's not too taut. Like I could stick my finger up here and grab it, but it's, it's nice and tight. Everything's smoothed out. But floating is when the batting obviously floats anyway. And the quilt top just hangs over the edge. I rarely ever, ever roll up a quilt top on that bar. I always take it down. It's just easier for me to let it float. So I have decided at 10 stitches per inch, I'm going to just meander this top. So it meanders just motion around. So let me do that. And I'll show you a little bit of me quilting.
So I'm going to continue working on this and I will show you when I complete it. So it's all done. I just need to pull it off, but my front screen froze in the off position. I probably died or something. <laughs> but the project count has 35,638 stitches in this little quilt. That's a lot of stitches. Didn't take me very long either. So now we just need to pull it off. Can we manage that well? Holding the camera? I'm not sure. Let's see. Got to take the side clamps off. And then all I need to do is pull this, the red snapper. It comes right out of the channel. Bam, just like that. And then if I just move the machine out of the way, it makes things easier. Oops, that's still locked. And then I just pull it off. There's a yank. Yank. There we go. And then we just yank this red snapper off. They come off so easily. Just like that. And there's the little quilt right there. Let's go trim it up and get it ready for binding. Yesterday I finished another quilt. I'm bringing this in here, by the way. I finished another quilt on a video. I did that for my open gates box, so I was thinking about loading it, but I need to go choose a back, something that goes with it. But for now, I guess I can just get this trimmed up because I literally need to find more backing fabric and start putting them with these quilts. It's going to take me a while to get all these done, but that's my goal with all this, you know, is to get all these quilts done. So, yeah, I need to trim this one up and take photos of it because that's what I usually do after. Well, actually, I got to bind it, then take photos. You know how that goes. Anyway, so I'm going to do that, trim it, um, bind it, and then I'll show you. I'm actually just going to bind it with this same fabric back here, this fabric. So that's what I'm going to bind it with um, because it looks great. You know, the, the color scheme goes together. So I'm just going to bind it with that. And then that's it. That's all I'm going to do. And then obviously probably work on that and make some backings for that. So we'll get to all that very shortly. So I'm just going to get this done and then show you some photos and then probably show you what I'm working on next. Kind of keep the flow with this. <laughs> I'm keeping myself super busy. Like, so busy. Okay. I'm going to go for a bit, though, because I need a break. So, yesterday I totally forgot to show you the finished quilt. That's right here. And I pulled out another quilt, and Scott and Thumper are hanging out in here with me. <laughs> and I figured, look at them, just hanging out, playing. <laughs> There's my finished quilt. I'll open it in two seconds. So I pulled this one out. It was a Fat Quarter Frenzy from a video here on my channel. It was on a So Sunday, two So Sundays in a row, in, or whatever, I think, that I finished that. And then we, Scott picked this backing for it. So now I need to create the backing for that. Scott, will you hold this up so we can show the audience? So here it is. That's what it looks like. It has a full meander around it. So it's an all over meander. Ah, I think it's adorable. Scotty, let's see the back. And that's what the back looks like with that pieced blocks in it to, you know, get them used up. So it's very cute little print with the little tiny speckles <laughs> and then my signature is in it because i try to put a tag on everything but i kept this one simple with just my name and the date turn it around one more time isn't it nice to have help so that's what it looks like it's beautiful with all the browns and the blues and the greens and the maroons and you name it it's beautiful so now I just need to put this back together so that this quilt can get quilted. And I also want to quilt 
this little quilt today. So I made this the other day. I put a back together for it and figured, well, I might as well load this on the long arm real quick because there's enough room here and enough room here. It was just two fat quarters hooked together. I figured that, you know, I could load that and I had a little small piece of scrap batting that actually fits that. So now to just get it all done and work on stuff. Oh, there they all go. My company left the room, but that's okay. I can just get more work done when they're not in here. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm just going to piece the pieces together for this quilt for the back. I'm just going to, you know, make the length I need. I think it was 70 and a half by 78. So I just need to go down like I should go four inches more, but when I do my own personal stuff, I always give myself barely any room. As long as there's enough room for the red snappers to hook up, then I don't care for myself. If someone else sends me a quilt, it needs to be bigger by four inches all the way around, just so that I have nice, comfortable space and I'm not messing anything up. Because <laughs> when it's my own thing, if I mess something up, oh well. So I'll be back later to tell you how this is going on the long arm. I just did like this loop feathery thing. That's the binding for it. It's already cut and just needs to be put on, but it's done. It's done. So I got another item done and this is what the back looks like. I did use navy blue thread, but as you can tell, it blends nicely with both the top and the back. Even the fact that there's whites in here. I think it shows off the quilting. So sometimes I just like to poof, it's out there. But that's done. I'm going to lay down though for the rest of the day. I don't feel good. And that drove me nuts, which made my, I mean, it's a little tiny thing, but uh, you know, that feeling. So I probably won't lay down all day, but when I feel like getting up, I'll piece the back to this other quilt, get it done or at least loaded, and go from there. So I think I'm going to end the video here, though. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out last week's vlog and many other videos that I have on my page. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye.